I will hit. Hello, and welcome back to these bare bones conversations. I'm Corey Hess. Um, and today I have William Sutherland on with me. And um, Bill's been my friend for, I think it's been about a year and a half, something like that, Bill. Yeah. Um, and uh, Bill's one of these sort of fascinating characters who I think he saw one of my podcasts and he he connected with me and I, I I'm a little bit shy as a person, but but Bill um, was very enthusiastic and um, and he, he surprised me with his enthusiasm. And then uh, it turns out he's been this really wonderful um, friend and um, brother in, in uh, we have very similar interests. Um, and he's I've been working with him in my classes, but also I've been learning so much from him. Um, he always has something uh, really uh, helpful to share with the group. And um, so today I wanted to bring him on to talk a little bit about um, his life and his process and maybe we can share a little bit. And, and then also he just completed a, a really interesting fast. And so I thought that might be interesting. We thought it might be interesting to, to talk a little bit about that. So, um, so welcome. Bill, thanks so much for joining us. Well, thanks, Corey. I'm really looking, looking forward to this conversation as well. So um, I look forward to every time we get a chance to talk and, uh, and, uh, and see where that goes. So yeah, much gratitude. And yeah, thanks for bringing me in. Oh, man, man. Um, so uh, Bill's had a really interesting life. Um, he's, he's a medical doctor. Um, he owned a, uh, a karate dojo. Um, he lived in Japan. Um, he's, he's involved in the, uh, kind of Native American spirituality, um, uh, Seiki, very interesting, um, Bushmen in Africa, he's worked with, with them. So, so much to tell. Can you just talk a little bit about, um, some of your history in that and what it sort of, um, what it's brought out and, and, and what it is for you today? Uh, you, you know, it's it's interesting. I'm. I kind of feel like I'm I'm in in sort of a at this. I just turned fifty one this last week, and I, I kind of do feel like I'm in a second cycle now of life, um, where I'm not sure what's coming forward. Like at the beginning of another cycle, right? That there's a there's a real sense of emerging wonderment um, as to, um, you know, what this 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 next episode unfolding of, of life will bring and, and and we'll get around to talking about the fast and in some ways that's an interesting marker you know of this sort of moment of transition or change in my life but to talk about the sort of first circle you know which which is sort of has had a uh, an interesting come about um and it almost sounds cliche but it, right it started when i was a very very young child you know that uh, um you know as i speak here from my uh, office my mental health pra practice um but so I grew up uh, north of Toronto, you know, in a, in a, a small, well, it was then a small town of, um, that was progressively becoming suburban, a little town called Newmarket, Ontario at the time. And it's, it's a much bigger town now uh, with Toronto's growth over the decades. Um, and it was, a, it was a, just, a, you know, just a lovely, um, I think, very typical upbringing of, you know, a, a North American, you know, a, a North American suburban kid uh, the, born in the 70s, you know, like the there was still a lot of freedom and, uh, you know, it, there was still a lot of sort of you know, traditional um, households and, and, you know, all the stereotypes and cliches certainly held true for my youth. And, and I was grateful for many of those, but, uh, but there was a number of things that from that sort of early start that were thematic. Um, one was in some sense, it sort of comes into play was, I've always struggled. I mean, when I was younger, it would probably be more of a deep melancholia, but that later became a, a more overt um, depression, you know, and, and, and much so in a clinical sense as I got older. And I don't bring that out in some sort of sense of, of pity or woe, but it's certainly been a major informer, right? It's a kind of, um, a kind of guest that visits and has, uh, you know, dropped into the house uh, throughout time. And, um, and at that time as well, um, 
I had a, a lovely, you know, I had a lovely relationship with my grandparents and the one, all of them had influence on me in deep ways, but there was very much my one grandfather, I uh, called him my big grandpa, he was six foot five and he was just a fascinating character and I was just glued to him in all ways. I mean, we were bonded and so he was my grandparent, but he was, he was a mentor as well. And his passion was jazz, he was a jazz drummer and he just loved the nature of rhythm you know, and the nature of improvisation and, and soulfulness, you know, and he had velour suits, a red velour and a blue velour and, you know, and he'd play at, uh, you know, Italian restaurant nightclubs that I'm sure were money laundering operations in the day. And, you know, it had all that kind of CD yet characters and it was full. And I remember his kids going to listening to him in, in these restaurants and, and at the time, though, I, I, I was really a, a wound, like tight in my sense of, of what the world should be of right and wrong and, and a, a sense of a very tight morality that didn't necessarily come from a family of origin, but just was sort of part of what I was. And, and that was sort of part of that shaping. And so it was hard to find my rhythm. I think, you know, in many ways, he would love to, of me to have been a drummer in, 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 in the, the um, literal sense of that at that time. But you know, I had trouble relaxing to the point that I could even say clap a rhythm without feeling a sense of self embarrassment. But we had so many other topics and much of it was spiritual in nature. And a lot of that was overt and explicit, but the majority was covert and implicit, and somehow pointed back to deep family lines through the Irish family. And, you know, and, and, and um, you know, as I get stories from my mother of her grandmother, you know, my grandfather's mother, you know, just like of those things that were part of family, you know, the old things, um, traditional things of, of, of a time and place that isn't now, but it, you know, it, but those tracks and shadows of it had been made through. And there was another great love at the time. I wanted to be nothing other than a doctor when I was young. So from the minute that, you know, young kids, as we did then, you know, we said, okay, I want to be a fireman. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a it's very different today. I mean, there wasn't a chance to be a, you know, a, an influencer or a TikTok, a uh, famous yeah. TikTok person, but, you know, we had to take on more traditional ones, but I wanted to be a doctor. And, and this was true all the way um, till the age of 14, uh, which I found my way into a martial arts club in my town with my first instructor, Brad Jones, who had lived and trained in Japan. And it was a traditional dojo. It was very, you know, the, uh, the manner, the discipline, the form, it was exactly like it was in Japan. And so here I was, now this would be in 1984, but also training with older men, right? From, you know, that, you know, of, of that grew up in post-war 50s, 60s. Um, you know, this was, it was a different generation, right? And so this whole influence and confluence now of a whole other set of mentors. Um, and when that happened, I let go of the medical idea and there was nothing I wanted to do other than be in Japan and train karate. And uh, then, over the next year uh, in competing in uh, competitions in Ontario, uh, I caught the eye of a Japanese instructor, uh, uh, Takemasa Okiyama, Okiyama Sensei, Okiyama Kancho, who is, uh, one of the, was one of the early Japanese instructors to come to Canada, and he was in the Toronto area. And he invited me to come and train at his dojo, but he was in Toronto, and that was by transit two hours away from me. Uh, I had to take a bus from Newmarket to Toronto, and then subways and you know all and uh, bus routes and all of these kind of things and so I, I I took it up and I found it kind of was like my Mr. Miyagi except my Mr. Yagi, Miyagi was an explosive volcano and of um, you know just unpredictability and um, and I would sleep in the dojo in the base in this moldy basement Friday night Saturday night sleep in the dojo clean the dojo he'd take me out for you know like to get fed I would take classes all day every day and as I got older I would start to teach so that became you know, even more deeply ingrained. And then at 17 through the Rotary Club, I did a year exchange trip to Japan, very southern tip of Japan in Kagoshima Prefecture, a little town called Kanoya. Went to a Japanese high school for a year and trained karate and kendo uh, for that year. My karate dojo was literally a dirt floor with a tin roof over it. And we'd, we'd actually brush away the newly arisen stones each time and, you know, just all of the, uh, like uh, the nature of uh, shoji and shugyo and like this sort of sense of, you know, this immersion, and it was tough, right? I mean, I mean, martial arts training at that time was, you know, it wasn't uncommon to be, you know, uh, commonly bruised, uh, uh, always bruised, actually, you know, and, and how do you bring yourself back every day? Um, and, and that was an incredible experience. And, and so that was in the bones. And, and then 
you know, I went back to Japan uh, again after that. And then I started university and I ended up dropping out of university twice. And there was that melancholia. And I now in hindsight, I reflect back that there were those cycles of that were depressive. Um, again, you know, not a diagnosis, not really an awareness, not really a sense, but this was, you know, part of the organizing of my life. And I ended up going back to Japan uh, for a third time. But ironically, in Japan, I, I ended up finding a Canadian karate instructor in Japan, in Kobe, just prior to the earthquake at Kobe University. And his main student was a, an American um, who was a high level uh, competitor. And uh, this, uh, I don't know his last name anymore, but it was Lanny was his first. And he had been in Japan for like 30 years or something at this point. And anyway, in conversation, it was them that had somehow cued me to this notion of Native American spirituality. And they're like, yeah, if you, when you go back to Canada, um, you should really look into this. And, and I don't know what motivated them to say that or what their background was, but for whatever reason, it stuck. And um, so after doing, you know, uh, about two years of training in Japan and, and, and honestly, again, that depressive sort of notion, which probably drove me home, you know, and uh, back into things I um, reconnected with uh, a previous girlfriend who is now my wife, Lisa, and, and, um, you know, things sort of progressed forward and I, and this interest, the seed of, of seeking out elders. And um, I said, well, let's go out to Manitoba. We were living in Toronto at the time. And uh, I, I want to be with these elders. I want to find them. I want to go to ceremony. I want to learn. And she said, well, I'll go out with you, but you have to marry me first. I said, okay. So it was that simple. So that was, that was the proposal. She said, you have to marry me. I said, yes. Uh, you know, we got married within the year. I was 22 and uh, she was a ballet teacher. She had trained at university to teach ballet and she got a job at the Royal Winnipeg Ballet and, um, and another really prominent school out there after we arrived. And there we were. And that started a 10 year odyssey where I um, started training with these Ojibwe elders, mentoring, being with them, just, you know, a sweat lodge, sun dance, other ceremonies, um, brilliant, wonderful uh, group of old men. And again, I found myself going from one, you know, this other this one mentor group in the martial arts and that still remained in this new mentor group in a different culture you know of these of these men and all the while the onion layers are falling off peeling off but i was still again pretty rigid and so i was kind of black or white like okay i was doing martial arts and now i'm doing this and out of a, a sweat lodge um with this old man fabian morisol red cloud was his spirit name and, and um and and he um and, and he had a, a type of profound communication with spirit. And it's one of those things that's very hard to explain unless you're there and see it. I mean, it's one of those mind blowing world view changing kinds of experiences, but these were regular within the ceremony. And he, on our first, uh, the fir our first weekend having met each other, it was a week on long set of ceremonies for high school, uh, uh, indigenous high school kids from the city. And I was helping, I was just, I was helping to, I'd been living out there and I, and I was helping to, you know, build the lodges and just chop wood and carry water and all that business. And he sat down with me when everybody left, he said, uh, you've let go of a gift. And you know, when it's one of those gut punches, it was such a simple sentence, you know, I'm like, boom, wow, I know, I know what you're gonna say, don't say it, <laughs> and he says it. And he says, the, the grandfather said, do you um, have let go of a gift? And he goes, uh, you practice martial arts, right? Yeah, he goes, well, what kind of martial arts? I said, yeah, karate. Oh, karate, he says. He goes, oh, where you train? It's, uh, what do you call that? Do you have a name for it? I said, a dojo. Yeah, dojo. He said, dojo is kind of like a lodge, really, isn't it? I said, yeah, I guess it is. It's kind of like a lodge. And he goes, and the dojo, you know, from our perspective, we'd say it carries the teaching of respect. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. He goes, I think you should be teaching at a dojo. And within a month, all the synchronicities line up. I meet a, a business partner who had trained in Japan 20 years before I did. He was a successful lawyer. He wanted to train again. He hadn't found what he was looking for, you know, and, and uh, he was my supporter, my benefactor, um, uh, Bob McRoberts. And he, he uh, helped, you know, and next thing I know, within a month, we had this working dojo, beautiful, like a, the kind of dojo you work for years to get, you know, the floors, the mirrors, everything was there. And we were off and I was teaching. So there was this parallel between the teaching and the Native American spirituality, and then this great relationship between dojos and Japanese instructors and Ojibwe um, uh, elders and uh, Manitoba and, and Ontario. And we created this family of interaction 
of, of, of and it was this beautiful time of 10 years of this sort of cross-cultural fertilization. The Kodo drummers, had, the famous Kodo drummers had come to Winnipeg to perform. And I went and I talked to them, I spoke Japanese and I said, hey, one drum culture to another, would you like to meet these Ojibwe elders and come to a sweat lodge? And they're like, yeah. So I had the Kodo drummers in a sweat lodge sharing, you know, these, these the, the Ojibwe drum and they're sharing their drum language and their drum culture and how all these things opened up and it was remarkable. And it was at that time too, I was, uh, my, my first year I made no money in the karate club where I was, I was actually delivering papers uh, to pay the rent as a paper boy at 22. So my wife said, she didn't marry a doctor. She married a paper boy, you know? So, uh, and my kids say, I, uh, I glowed up, you know, as it went along, mm -hmm. but, um, but, uh, Anyway, um, one of my students ran a, a really lovely sort of boutique bookstore. It was sort of a new agey kind of bookstore with all the all the trappings. And, and he was one of my students and he gave me a job and uh, working in the bookstore. And uh, on the shelf, I found this great book called Shaking Out the Spirits. And it was written by a man named Bradford Keeney, who's this amazing. I mean, he's I mean, he is just deeply, uh, you know, so many things to me as my my mentor, my brother. Um, you know, my guide in, in, in so many things. And um, it was a, it was like the sort of spiritual travel log autobiography of these great healers that he'd been called to be with around the world. And um, I reached out to him. I, I saw that he was, he was a, he's a bit at the time he was a professor of psychology at a university in Minnesota. And, um, and I reached out and he was just very open. I said, you know, I've been, I've lived in Japan. He'd been in Japan working with a healer. And I said, you know, I just came from the sweat lodge last night and he had a relationship with Ojibwe elders and, He's like, why don't you come down for lunch? I mean, it happened to be a seven hour drive to lunch, but I said, sure. So I drove from Winnipeg to Minneapolis and, and we had lunch. And he said, you know, next week, uh, my teacher Osumi, Osumi Sensei, this master of this ancient Japanese healing tradition called Siki Jitsu, she's going to be here for a week. Do you want to come? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. So I, you know, I meet Osumi and, uh, and then, and then, you know, we have this primary relationship, him and I, and then later with his, uh, later when he when when he married again with his wife Hillary and the, you know with their work and then through Brad I met Osumi and then through him he had spent a lot of time with the Bushmen in Africa I was able to go to Africa and have this time with the Bushmen and further move and explore the work that was started and in, in you know with him with Osumi and the lodge being with the Bushmen and and so there was also and then I, at one point and then after having met Osumi I, I, I went back to Japan twice and uh, I think at one point I, you know, I went back for two months and, and lived with her, which I'm a very patient wife because I had two young kids at the time during that, that episode. But it was also important uh, in the development. And, and there were so many other ones, Corey. I mean, there's been so many other ones that, you know, a week here or a, an encounter here or, a, you know, a longer piece of thing over time, but they've all been part of this picture too. And, you know, I just want to acknowledge them, although I won't be mentioning them, you know, for the sake of time and name. And um, ultimately, at the end, just to sort of wrap up the story, like, this cycle, it was out of the lodge that just like they had said, it's time to teach karate 10 years later, you know, they were like, it's time to go back to school. It's time to become that doctor you wanted to be. And, uh, and the, you know, so that was back in 2000. I went back because I dropped out twice, got my Bachelor of Science. I didn't get into medical school right away, got a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. I nursed for a year as my mother was a nurse, my grandmother was a nurse, again, lineage, tradition, family. I love that I carry that, that, I, that you know, that, that, that tradition of nursing, but I couldn't let go of the idea of medicine. And I went in and I, I did it in the second uh, application round and became a, a rural family doctor. And again, you know, more, you know, the details of how that practice is unfolded, of course, is there. But all of that in some sense right now, and, and now after we're, am I at now of coming into my um, 12th year of, of medical practice? Um, there's a sense of wrapping this cycle. And now this cycle, this next cycle is opening. And maybe I'll just talk about that little, that next cycle just briefly for one second, because that's really the next opening, which is, so, you know, this first cycle, obviously so much of the deeply, and I, I know this is a problematic word because of the way it's used, but in the deepest sense, in the ancestral, the ancient, the archaic, in the old ways, these shamanic traditions and i'm using that as an over because they're all there's so many things that are similar and you know the, the nature of song and soul and spirit and yet there's the, the the uniqueness of expression but these deep shamanic traditions have been so much a part of my informing and 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 this this remembrance of what does it mean to be a healer what is a call to be a healer 
you know, as physicians, you know, I'm just working with this notion right now. Once we were healers, you know, what is what is this? Um, and, and not as an answer, as a question, a, 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 always a becoming, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, my, my kids have had this great saying throughout life. They say, yeah, my dad's a part-time physician, but he's also a part-time patient, right? Because this is all, like I said, this thread has always come through. And so this past October, you know, but I'm not a very good listener. Like I said, you know, not only was I sort of stiff and rigid, I, you know, kind of thick here too, you know, a lot, a lot of life, you know, a lot of barriers I've had to open up against internally in this, you know, and um, this last October, I got hit with five acute illness um, experiences, some that were quite terrifying. Honestly, I, I had a cataract surgery in my right eye and I had this rare side effect and went blind for, you know, and, and, um, and it turned out to just be for the day. But in the moment, of course, we didn't know that. And then, you know, there was visual deficit for the week and thankfully everything came back. The very fact that I'm having a cataract surgery at 50 years of age at that point was, you know, again, yeah. so, but in this moment, I had five acute illnesses, two of which landed me in hospital on top of five chronic illnesses at the age of 50, right? And these aren't, I recognize that these on one level, they're separate, but at one level, both physiologically in the sense of my well-being, but also in a sense of spiritually, like listening to and harmonizing what's being the calling, what's being called of me, what's, you know, what's being asked of me. But fighting that, you know, no, no, you know, like, like just, you know, almost like a tantrum, like fighting that call and that claim, yes, you know, and, and, rec and yet at the same time, what is calling and claiming me is, is this mystery called health with a capital H and, and, and grace with a capital G and, 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 and the nature of the invitation to be, step into my gift and being, right? But I'll tell you, five chronic illnesses that were been getting worse and five acute ones in a month, I'm like, I'm listening. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm listening. And it was in that moment that I said, I need to settle down and be and fast. And I'd fasted before, but this was in a new way, in a new level. And so maybe I'll pause there for a second and give a chance to see what stirred in you in that. And because I, you know, and because I, I really do love when we have a chance to converse and but uh, anyway, we a landing a landing pad uh, and a launching pad all at once. Yeah, well, well, I I I guess I just keep hearing, you know, this word, you know, health, and you know, and and I I'd be curious what you might say, because I think about this, you know, what is health? What is health? I think it's a really good question, and and what what heals and what is what is health? I think it's a really good question, you know. But let me go back to you with that right away, because I, because, because I, I, and, and of course, anybody that's listened to you on your podcast and, and, and heard you talk about your experience, it's so beautiful and so elegant. And, and of course, and you're writing, you know, again, anybody that hasn't gone to the Zen embodiment blog, you know, uh, Corey, I mean, your writing is just, is just so beautiful. But if I said to you, and I, I meant this sincerely, and I, I as, as a person seeking to understand this too, if I said, Corey, like, this question of what is health as you understand it from the spirit of a koan and i'm not a person that is claiming to understand it from the spirit of a koan i'm but i but i love this question it's it's grabbed me it's held me right as it's grabbed you yeah like how would you tell others tell me like how to hold what is health as a koan mm. like for those of us that have this calling well, not only into this mystery called health, and but also this this calling called healing, can it be held as a koan? Like, can 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 we can it shape us and move us? Like, you know, maybe because I, I I don't know. Like, I, that, that's that's what I'm considering. That that's the spirit of it. But 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 you've been there, and and you've tackled these things called koans through till the moment they they show themselves as they will and do, and 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 change us. Like, how do you see it in that way? Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, our, I think it just boils down to like what our, what our questions are. What's our real question? What do we, what's, what is that real question? And I think um, there, there are different, different way, different words for it, health, um, life, um spirituality you know um enlightenment all this i think um and finding that most authentic 
aspect and touching that and becoming that. And I think that is somehow transformative. I think that touching that most authentic aspect is, I think what I've found is, is, is that, that, that heals and that changes and that guides. And um, for instance, with, with the koan work, I think um, it would always be just what's the most, what's the most true, what's the most authentic, what's, what's, what's really happening. And um, if I can let go into that, um, that's always, that's always the, the truth coming through and healing and, and whatnot. It, they all become the same thing, I think, in a certain way for me. The answer to the koan is, is the answer to my, my most desperate question. You know, they're always the same. You know, my healing is always, um, it's always the same, the same question, the same deal. And how can I um, let that in? That's, that's my experience. That, that, that resonates so strongly. Uh, I remember you in a few of your tellings saying, um, you know, as you worked with the breakthrough koan Mu in your time in Sogenji, yeah. and it was like, you know, just always just back to Mu, back to Mu, back to Joshu's yes. question, back or his answer, you know, and back to the question and back to Mu. And then you said at one point, you know, people would ask something and it'd be Mu, you know, and you and you'd say, well, you know, and you would see an observation and Mu would come out, you know, and in that same spirit, I've been trying, I've let, and you know, I haven't learned this actually from teachers or from theory. I learned it from my patients because they they reflect back to me my state, right? Like because it's an interaction, right? There's two of us becoming one called this one interaction, this one relationship. So I have to be accountable to my state. Uh, to be authentic and to be real and to harmonize and into my 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 fuck ups into my off targets into where I'm not calibrated, you know, and then I go, you know, what is the health here? You know, what is the health here? Not and not as what is the health in them? That's that that health disappears, you know, maybe in them, but in the relationship in me and the context and the birds singing in our histories and our lineages and all of life, right? And I keep going back to what is health, like all throughout the day, what is health right now? Uh, even in my illness, what is health in 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 these symptoms what is health in this suffering what is health in this pain what is health in our conversation right now you know so and that was the attraction in reaching out to you like it's like oh this it, it's different but same the resonance right like like this like what is you know you know and, and again it's always it's it's birth ten thousand answers right because every moment it's 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 dynamic it's distinct it's revealing it's changing and yet the question is the same right Right. And I call them capital letter words, right? Like capital letter health, capital L love, capital w, w, w wisdom, uh, capital S sacred, capital T truth. Like th we can point to them, but we can never. So that's why I can't answer it to you. What is, you know, when you ask me it directly, what is it? Well, this is it right now. You know, this, the quality of what we're sharing, and this is it, you know, it's, and, and, and this is pointing to whatever that, right. that mystery is. And, you, you know, before we got on the air, we, we talked about how fasting brought us to, you know, and this has come up in your writing and how I really felt it was, it brought me to a state of grace, the, the presence of grace, the, the movement of grace, the, the shaping and organizing by grace of grace through grace in a graceful way, in a non-graceful way in my own receiving or pushing away from it. And that's one of those other capital G words, you know, like our capital letter words, like, you know, what is that mystery called grace? So, yes. Yeah. yes. So that's how I'd answer what is health right now that's my answer in this moment to you <laughs> um, i i um i i feel like the present moment um there, a lot of people like to talk about the present moment um but it is so huge it is so transformative it is so um such a a context of of clarity emerging and um, it, it's so transformative and, and it's, it's right now and it's happening and um, becoming that, letting that, letting that through um, is, is so kind of foreign. It's so um, counterintuitive to what we've, we, we can't, we, we don't know how to, how to let that through. We don't know how to look at that, but it's always there putting us in a context of, of, 
um, this, this truth, this uh, clarity, this health. And um, I think just, it's very interesting um, uh, that, and again, I think of my own process, just feeling like um, it's not really about me. It's, it's not really about Corey or his ideas. There's, there's so much more going on. And, um, and, and that's so wonderful because if it were really about me or my, um, my seemingly real issues, then that wouldn't be that interesting. There's something much more interesting going on. And, and so that, I think that's, for me, that's health in a certain way, like, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> I love, I love that. And, and you know, as all good stories, I'm, I mean, I come from an Irish and Scottish yeah. background, so my stories are always very nonlinear, and we could they go this way and that way and back this way. And so let's jump to the middle of the fasting story. And you know, as you know, uh, you were following it um, through our, uh, you know, through um, the Energy Collective group yes. and and the ZZ work and the standing work. And you know, I was reporting to you most days that you know you were one of my check ins. You know, day five, day six of this. You know, it would ended up being twenty four days. It, it didn't have we didn't. It wasn't a goal, right? Every I said. Every day I'm going to feel into it. I don't want it to be goic. I want to be in tune. Sure as hell, that ego did show up, you know, because I was the ego was saying go forty, you know, and and all of these kind of things, you know, like uh, tie Jesus, you know, that kind of you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff, right? You know, so the ego I mean, it shows up, but you know, so I'm there and I'm touching base with you and I'm touching in and I'm getting that support. But you know, what was lovely, and this is again the present moment, right? Like, and I remember in those in that moment, part way in right? It's somewhere in there, there was this crazy moment where your curiosity, where your internal uh, movement started bubbling in response to this internal movement in me that bubbled in response to, you know, the other context. This is grace, right? None of us can claim it. None of us can say, well, I did that. Like, you know, it was just, we got, we all got swept in this current somehow. And I remember being part way in, you're like, you know what, maybe I'm going to fast too. Yeah. You know what? I think I want to try five days, you know, and, and then, but, but if, if they could only have seen us, right. Like in our, in our, in our, our texting back and forth or in our, our talks after the class or like a moment of this, and it was like, you know, that, 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 that arising in the interaction, in the relationship of that exuberance, that positive contagion. And I say that in the face of COVID and Omicron and all this crazy that, you know, that we, that we literally got caught up in this positive contagion and health often, you know, spreads in, in this yeah. way. And of course, in the group, uh, you know, we had a couple of members join in too, like, I'm going to fast for a few days too. And, you know, like this sort of, you know, this sort of spreading, but there was something about those moments that weren't about fasting. Yeah. Right. They were about resonance and coherence and us being in the health together and it becoming a shared journey and it consolidating our friendship um, and, you know, advice and support and, 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 and this reciprocity and mutuality of the different ways we shared, like, you know, more than what the fast in any way accomplished, like these are the things that actually made it sweep right that it made it sweet and soft and not about suffering and hair shirt hardship like like this was like don't get me wrong i love eating i don't like fasting <laughs> you know i respect it i don't like it yeah right but man the camaraderie the friendship the, the yeah. these things that were coming out of it that would never have come out i love that yeah. you know and those were all of of the moment things right like like and of course it's we're telling it now as, as, a, as a capturing it as a story and sharing it after the fact but i can see the smile like the remember like because the remembrance it's like yeah yeah i was right in that and then you were like you know it's like how's five days you're like you know maybe next day i'll, I'll do four you know i'm like i love that you know <laughs> you know as we just as we stumble through and are not knowing because that's it right I mean, we don't know every time's different we don't know how this is going to transpire we don't know what's coming out of it but um right but this living moment isn't abstract and it's not necessarily about always being overtly serious being in the present right right to right. me the presence isn't about serious or non-serious serious happens yeah uh, um lightness happens heaviness happens right. but you know the moment is to me is about vitalness Mm -hmm. and and resonance coherence the, the the rope of connection right that we are in like this is the, like and, and i love if i just share one little thing you know I, I was sort of in a prior to the fast in the midst of that month of october right the, the down again the depressive the chronic depressive and out there i did that sort of classic you know dude what's enlightenment i need it i need you to help me get there you know like i'm like i've got like you know 
like somehow my life is absent without it, or it's, it's sharp, it's, I'm a failure or it's, you know, it's, it's a, you know, like all the, the you know, I, the, 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 all the trappings of that kind of yes. place, you know, that we, that we, that, that or those of us that jump onto this kind of thing, you know, fall into. And, and I remember you wrote back, you know, you know, I, I, I laid out this, you know, you know, as fast as my two thumbs could text it, this freaking manifesto, you write back harmonize harmonize <laughs> you know, like, what the fuck? You know, harmonize harmonize and, and that's the present moment right that's it like here we have this moment harmonize harmonize here we are in this moment maybe it's heavy maybe it's light maybe it's dark maybe it's bright harmonize harmonize you know and we just find our way and i'm just like ah oh, it's not that's not hard i love that we're doing it now <laughs> you know we're doing it now oh man let me just repeat what what bill said there so he did four days and then he had some kind of like little little health thing and he ate and then he did 24 of of fasting so that's a long well, time well i did four days then i went blind after my cataract yeah. surgery and i i ran to the nearest caribbean restaurant to stress <laughs> eat <laughs> i told actually i was in the hospital because they thought i had a stroke and i sent my wife to the nearest caribbean restaurant to buy me oxtail stew mm -hmm. so i could stress eat and break the four days of fasting and then the 24 days opened up you know can you talk a little bit about this though this um um I don't know that we need to get too sciencey, but I, I was going to say, can can you talk a little bit about um, this time when I and I I can kind of recognize this. You're you kind of um, hit this this kind of lightness, and can you talk just a little bit about this kind of lightness that starts to happen in the fast? So, so let me just lay out. There's sort of multiple levels that are happening simultaneously, right? Like multiple planes of our experience. So at one level, there's absolutely the deep evolutionary plane. And what I mean by that is like, we have to remember that we share like 50% of our genome still with bacteria, right? Like there is some very deeply primal biochemical pathways that life is predicated on. And, and these were the things that survived like through the evolutionary tree such that you and I can be here today, right? right. Including in times of scarcity. And those that couldn't survive times of scarcity, times of nothing, um, times of the dry, you know, times of the, the lean, they'll, well, they're not here and neither were their offspring, but we are. Yeah. Right. So, you know, so we're talking about a type of capital H health, a capital W wisdom right. that's literally coded into us. Right. So, so. But in the modern world, we have a mismatch, right? Our individual life, our cultural societal life is mismatched with that evolutionary truth because we're in a world, at least superficially, of abundance, although often the quality is poor. And so I would say we have a poverty of quality, but we are abundant in quantity of macronutrients, fats, sugars, salts, you know, these kind of things. Yeah. So, so we have to recognize then this, the nature of the cyclic, just like the sun and the moon and the tides and, you know, and how this ties into our biology and our rhythms. There's the rhythm of feeding and there's the rhythm of fasting. And of course, now let's not go back billions of years, but let's go back hundreds of thousands to the, the, the you know, the, maybe up to 2 million, the time that we've been homo something, or habilis erectus sapien. And for, except for the last 10,000 years, and this has been accelerated in the last 400, in the last 50, in the last 10, I mean, it gets, it gets crazier and crazier with our relation and distortion of this thing called food. But remember, as much as there was times of abundance, and we called that feasting, and literally our hunter-gatherer ancestors would gorge like wolves. You know, there's no refrigerators, there's no freezers. You know, maybe we'd smoke some meat, but if they found a beehive, they ate all the honey at once. There was no moderation. There was just feasting. But there was also the famine, the fast, right? Where, and it could happen on many levels. Maybe you only ate a meal in a day, so you were fasting the other 22 hours. Like it was fractal, right? Like it was, it, it was, it, it was fractal in time. And, and then that maybe you went two or three days because you didn't have a good hunt. So you didn't eat for two or three days, but you were good. You had your stores, you moved like your fat stores, you know, like you were still, they were still moving. And I found that too, like you, I lived my life. It, just, it didn't shut down. And, but maybe it was seasonal, the dry season, the winter season, uh, a, a hard season, 
right? So we actually would learn to fast on these various time scales, just as we would learn to feed, like maybe in the summer, all the fruit, you know, we're feeding through the weeks and like a bear building up their fat stores, you know, like we're not different than that in, in many ways. It's, I mean, it's, it's the, 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 the cycles are slightly different in our responses, but it's, it's, it's very parallel. So there's that level, right? Okay. Then there is the level of my individual, like my lived biology, like, like Bill's body through this lifetime from conception to now, right? That history we call our ontogeny or development as an individual. But I have to tell you, there's two very separate us's. And if, this, if you're only in the fed you, meaning that you are eating, it used to be, remember when we were kids, there was only, there was, it, we're probably still eating a lot with three meals. But remember, that this is the adage that if you were born in the 70s, maybe the early 80s, and but you don't remember it now, mom would say, you'd be like, you know, nine, eight or nine o'clock would come around. You're like, I'm hungry. And without any sympathy, mom would say, I guess you should have eaten more at dinner. Like there was no, there was no such thing as like snacking later at night, you know, or through the, like, you know, you're at school, you didn't snack. Like, you know what I mean? Like now the trainer says you should have six meals a day. You should have eight meals a day. You should eat all day long. And the problem is we, we eat from the morning to late at night. You know, we're rarely going six, eight hours without eating this whole other state called our not eating state, which is an, a whole other way of being doesn't even kick into a minimum of 12 hours more at 14, more at 16, you know, more at 20, then 24, 36, four days, five days, like, like, so if you've never experienced this, you've actually missed half of what it's like to be incarnated in a corporal living body. Mm -hmm. You're missing an entire way of how you're meant to be. And these things are meant to be in relationship. And you've literally just moved all that over. So there's all the learning that comes from that state. So that's the, you know, from evolutionary to the individual's biology. Yeah. There is the, there's the social of state of how people respond to you in a fast, how you are with people that are withdrawing from people, the breaking of the fast, the sharing of meals, like feeding is deeply social as is not feeding. And in some ways it's, 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 it's social in that you need to withdraw some degree from the social, like it's, you're not just fasting from food, but you, you actually need to fast from the noise and the chatter, right? Like you need to sort of with like that bear hibernating, you need like, you know, but that's social though. It's, it's, it's the, the balance to the social, right? It's not shutting off. It's very active withdrawal, right? So that you can come back and be fully engaged. Yeah. Right. So there's the social, yes. there is, um, a double part to the spiritual, right? What I, what I, what you, I find is, I think this is just whatever, I don't know what spiritual means, but, but, but what I mean by it here is a type of arising to be in relationship and communion with the numinous, with the mystery and however you see it, including a drive back into a kind of action because you're not putting your energy to cooking, seeking food, cooking, digesting, and other that inner, there's still an energy. It's, it, it, it is also, I mean, obviously it's the energy of rest, restoration, rejuvenation. There is this whole fountain of youth aspect, which is also part of that, that biology of rest versus the biology of doing, but this other things come up in terms of wanting to engage spiritual practice. So like, I want to go and stand our ZZ and our standing awareness. I want to sit in meditative reflection. I want to be in prayer, right? I'll give you an example that, you know, for a number of months, I really liked like cold showers and sort of Wim Hof and his energy and, you know, but this idea of, of the hot, like the sweat lodge and the cold. And at times in my life, this has felt really good, but for a number of months, maybe even a few, a couple of years now, deep aversion. I can't, like, I can't get in the shower, deep aversion to fasting for a number of years, by the way, this didn't just like this. Remember the, the five chronic and five acute illnesses is what it took to yeah. get me back. Right. Yeah. The, from that inertia, day three, now often in the early fasting, you do feel chilled, particularly at night. It's, it, you know, the, you're in that other state day three. I was like, I need to be in cold showers. Mm. I have been in cold showers twice a day since day three of the fast. Wow which I've broken. And now I'm, I'm obviously that's a few weeks ago, but, but that emerged, right? Like, it's like, it was like, I need to do this. And in that I would stand, I would chant, I would pray in the shower, you know, I would sing, mm -hmm. just needed to just needed to voice to tone to move, right? Yeah. 
you know, to go into reflection. So this, that would come up. And the last part, which is what I alluded to before, right, which is more like in my relation to whatever this ancestral, ancient, archaic and relationship is that we're, I'm going to call the shamanic, but not in the new agey, like, 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 in, I don't know what I, what I don't, and the reason I say is I don't even know what I mean by that, but I'm pointing to something that I, I feel in that relation. I could hear the calling, mm-hmm. right? I could hear that they have, a, that, 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 that mystery has a claim on me. It's not a free ride. Mm-hmm. I have a set of gifts, but they expect me to use it. Mm-hmm whatever they are it, it or yeah I, I, again these are don't yes. don't get caught on the on, the, on the, the prepositions it's it's but i could hear the calling and i knew i've always heard the calling but it was in the inertia the inertia was like a, a, a type of way of fighting it mm-hmm. and now it was like this emergent you hear the calling and this emergent sense comes and it says yes yes i say yes you know and and and, and, and that's, and you know that, yes, Corey, right? Like that is not it. Yeah. No one wants to say it. If you think you want to say it, check yourself into a hospital. You don't want to, none of us want to say it, you know, from the ego sense. But the yes wasn't my ego saying yes. My ego is going, no, you know, but, it, but the fasting allowed this, this, this bubbling from like from the tondin, right? To come, yes, you know, and then it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> there it is. You know, there it is. So, in a quick, and, and, you know, and there's great terms like around the biology, like, you know, autophagy, that's the deep cleansing of the cells, like literally our cells, if we eat all the time, if we're only in the eating frame, our cells are like hoarders, they have just gathered up a lifetime of everything and thrown nothing out that gets cleansed, all the old senescent precancerous types of cells that gets salvaged, it's all a big recycling operation, because you're not eating, we need the protein, right, that's called apoptosis, there's, there's, there's all of these beautiful pathways that lead to these Oh, as we, as things get geared down and trimmed down and, and literally all the, the, the fat is trimmed off, when you start to refeed growth hormone, other like, you know, uh, testosterone in men, like other the sex hormones, all of these different things come back online, stem cell production uh-huh. throughout the body, you know, like without, you know, injections or whatever, like literally deep yeah. levels of remembrance, embryonic resist- remembrance is literally coming forward and rejuvenating, right? And saying, you know, and remember, I told you the five and five of the illnesses, the five acute ones have taken care of themselves, a little bit of the arthritis in the hip, but it's like, but hey, just a little niggling now and again to remind me like, I'm, I'm now lift getting up at 630 every morning in the rebuild lifting weights with my son. Um, and the five chronics really have settled back into wonderful places like I had a, a cardiac uh, arrhythmia called atrial fibrillation. None of that bothering me right now. You know, so we go through all of these, they've all settled but i don't think they're all this part of the biological process they're they're, they're, the spiritual answering the the social they're they're a holism and i've I've made them sound separate these are all one thing yes and they've changed me yes love it Beautiful. A, a couple of little provisos. Just, I, I am a doctor, right? So, yeah. uh, A, I don't recommend that anybody, I, I had medical supervision from my doctor. I, I want to just be, I disqualify that right away. I was getting blood tests. I was checking in. I was getting feedback from family members. I'm listening. You need that, right? Because, you know, things can get a little weird in the midst of longer things. Like, you know, you there's clarities, but, you know, you're doing deep detoxing, deep changes, deep, you know, like I said, the ego is at play. Yeah. No, I think the notion of pushing up to five days with, you know, like, you know, from, from, you know, from 16 hours to five days is, you know, yeah. great um, self-discovery providing, you know, you're not a diabetic on medications that you're not on a bunch of high blood pressure medications. If you're on medications, you just have to be monitored because changes can happen very quickly. And, and you can all of a sudden find that you're overshooting because of medication. And, you know, so there's, there's lots of things to consider. Yes. yes. Um, but but so in saying that, you know, I love that you, you jumped in on the five day yeah. and, 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 and part of the other thing too, is there's the fasting, but there's the breaking of the fast, like there's the refeeding and that's where people get into the most trouble when you oh. go longer. Oh. And the general rule of refeeding is you need to spend one fourth of the time that you fast at minimum to gently introduce food back 
in a very logical, biological way to become attuned. And if you don't, you can become quite sick. You can get what's called a refeeding edema, um, you know, other issues around the gut. Um, so th there is, again, like the longer you go, there's intrinsic wisdoms and knowledges that need to be adhered to. Yeah, wow. And then, and then after the refeeding is the rebuilding phase in which I am in now. Like, so now I'm exercising. I've, 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 I hate weights, but I'm lifting them because, you know, that's my son's lifting them and, and there's <laughs> the social again, you know, and, and then all of the, the part of this reemergence, right. This coming out. And so there's, these phases are all important. Yes. And I see them as cycles now that mm -hmm. in longer or shorter, I want to keep moving through in life. Right. Right. Love it. Love it. So, so yeah, you feel like you'll, you'll do um, maybe uh, of course intermittent, but also maybe some fasts um, to kind of um, uh, maybe do like a little, little um, tune up or whatever. Is that kind of your process? Maybe. I think ultimately I, I actually feel I have one again with the, like, I, I, like I said, last time, just playing and listening in day yes. by day. I think in the new year, I stopped. Um, I had a lot of crazy processes happening on day 24, particularly with my skin. Whoa. Fascinating. You know, and remember, like fat tox, like all of the fat toxins of a lifetime are stored literally in our fat. It's like our fat can become quite toxic over a lifetime. Right. And of course, as you start to lose this fat, I, yeah. uh, I lost a lot of, you lose a lot of water weight in fasting. It's just the nature of the biochemistry. But when right. you gain that back with the refeeding, but um I lost about 23 pounds in 24 days. Yeah. So that's 23 pounds of accumulated toxin, not just energy stores, right? Yeah. So, so you have your liver, you have your kidneys, and you have your skin as the detoxifying organs. And my skin had this really funky, like rash type of thing. And, and now there's lots of, again, uh, who knows? At the end of the day, I, I, could, I could also have been senescent cells, like sort of precancered, like different, like the immune system identifying, or is this yeah. toxin coming? Like, who knows, right? It, it's a complexity. And, and, and of course, you want to fight the reductionism to say, oh, this is what it is. Yes. But it, it, it's what often in a longer fast we call a healing crisis. Like, I did recapitulate my inflammatory things. My arthritis would come, you know, like these different things would happen. As I, and you'd work, it was like you have to work through this to you know, go through a layer, you know, little layer go. Yeah. But that day 24 is, I mean, on what my ego was, says, well, say, oh, you should have pushed through, you cut short, you know, you bailed out. And, and but you know, I was getting a lot of, of feedback um, yeah. from people. And I think I was actually maxed, like, like, yeah. you know, and, and you want to be respectful to these things too, right? right? Like, it doesn't have to be all at once. Right. So my feeling in this moment is after the holiday season in January, I'm going to enter back into a fasting cycle because there's work to be done still mm -hmm. in this case. Yeah. And I just mean that simply and humbly. And it's not this perfectionist. I, I'm, I'm prone to those sort of perfectionist nodes and like yeah. thinkings and modes of being, but, but this really is, I, I believe a kind of listening and there's a momentum. Yes. I think once I do this deep cycle and maybe there's one more, who knows? I mean, like, you know, like whatever this number of whatever this cycle of cycles is, Yes. Because I, I, at this point in my life, this is important. Yes. Once that's done, I do then to see like that I'll be able to do sort of the, the, the maintenance, the respect of the proper maintenance cycles through a lifetime. Right. But I right. don't think I'm quite done the work yet. Uh -huh. I don't think so. Wow. wow. Interesting. Right. Right. Yeah. I was kind of wondering when you, you stop, like, how do you stop when you're at 24? I mean, you've been feeling like you want to stop for 20 days, you know what I mean? And then you, in a way, you know, it's kind of yes and no. Yeah. Right? I love it. It's great, but it's awful. And at 24, you're kind of like, well, how do you, how do you pull the trigger and stop? You know, yeah, it, it was less awful than you think there was, there's real mysteries after day 10, 10 was the most I'd ever done. I'd done lots of five, seven, 10 days throughout my life. You know, I remember fasting started with my introduction to the Anishinaabe, the Ojibwe people, where we did four day spiritual fasts, right. vision, Sundance, no food, no water for four days. Yeah, it's wow. a very different experience. Right. And again, but, but a different intent, like it's yeah. a, you know, yeah. for one's sense of vision or prayer or yeah. expression of gratitude. And, um, and of course that's still there in this work too. That's why I said about all these levels, it all comes together. Right. right. But day 10, like, so that's why I say to everybody, if you can do 36 hours, you can do four or five, five days because really day three is the worst. Right. And if you said to me, I don't want to keep going through days one through three, like that's just, that's just torture. 
yeah. right? And it's for some people it's day four, but you know what that that transition from three to four. But really, that's the if you're not used to it, is the as we if you don't have a good metabolic flexibility of burning all the different fuels we can burn sugar being like glucose being the most common fat being the next most common, but there's other ones too, you know, how they're converted to ketones or lactate or, you know, other different sources of fuel. But, but if you don't have that metabolic flexibility yet, you will feel just crappy in the first few days. Right. And then you feel better. And then often in that first 10 days, you will, it's like a sine wave. You're like, I feel really good. And then part of the day, like, I feel kind of crappy, you know, like, like there's sort of the shifting, right? I feel really good. I got this energy, this clarity. Oh, I feel like, yeah. But after t- between 10 days and honestly, between 10 days and 22 days in my, ex- in that experience this time, I, w- I wasn't really hungry. I was cooking meals for the family. Um, I enjoyed the smells. I enjoyed the colors. I enjoyed um, my love language of cooking, like for gifting them the meals of, you know, like, like I really enjoyed all of that. Yeah. But I really, the notion that that whole thing of, hu- and by then, I, I challenged the psychological habits of, of like the soothe, you know, what eating was as, as yeah. these habitual things. Like, you know, after 10 days, you know, I'd really wrestled with those demons. I wasn't reaching for the fridge. I wasn't, you know, yeah. and I, mind you, I wasn't a purist either. Like I, I had herbal teas, right? Like I, like I, I did, you know, some people are like water only, water only. And the yeah. research doesn't hold that out in my opinion. Like, you know, you can have many things like herbal teas or tea of different sorts and the like, and, and you're not breaking your fast. And those right. were little enjoyments of just a flavor of color of preparation. Right. But right. you know, it really wasn't there. But then days, the last two days, there was a confluence of things that changed the decision. So um, my vitality started going down. Yeah, I was quite a high vitality. You remember, I check in, I come to class, like I, I had a good vitality, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think anybody could have challenged. Yeah, that in the last two days, I felt like, oh, I'm on a downward slope here. Yeah. And I don't think it's just, and, and that's when, you know, the, the skin was getting intense, but I don't think it was just the, like a, a crisis. Now, ultimately the truth is if I had it gone longer, the, we, the body would have found a way to work it out. But the other thing was I was still working. I was still looking after my family. I was still doing, and because if I didn't do that, I would never have done it. Right. So th- this would, this would have been a very different, um, if I was in a retreat, if I was in a fasting medically supervised fasting center, if I was resting by a lake, you know, but that wasn't the condition. That wasn't the context I had to meet. So the context of the life and the demands, feeling like I was running, redlining the, the detox system, seeing the vitality go down, being attracted to food again. Like I was actually starting to like, you know, I'd smell, walk into the you know, supermarket or past a rest and be like, oh, that's a little painful. Like I really want yeah. to. Yeah. Um, and then, and the thing that was, my mom actually got this hit of intuition, and oh. she's a lovely woman. And she got a sort of an intuitive hit, a message of how how that is for her. And she said, "Listen," and my mom had really like a lot of people did have sort of rebound fears, like it's like you know you you get quite gaunt yeah. because of all the water. That's I mean you're losing a lot of weight, but the water loss will really give you a fairly what we call sort of cachexic kind of gaunt look, you know, and. Mm-hmm. So, you know, some of my family really moments and friends struggled with that because they're like, are you okay? Are you sure you're okay? I'm, yeah. like, no, I'm okay. This is, this is actually part of the process. But yeah. at this point, my mom, my mom wasn't having those kind of fears. Right. And she's like, listen, I really respect what you're doing. You know, you, 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 you know, I'm, I'm not, you don't change, take the, but it's this, this has come to me, take it or leave it. Yeah. And, you know, she, the message that she had for me was you, you've done what you've needed to do on, yeah. on this. And that, that's cool. That's wonderful. And it's, and it's, and it was just so short and it's time to stop now. Yeah. And my ego, but my ego was here. So like at 24, I'm like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm do 40, you know, like I'm good. It's like <laughs> two more weeks. I, this is like, Hey, I'm two thirds of the marathon. Like, you know what, like, you know, like I can do this. And then, and, but I promised myself, I wouldn't be rigid, I, that I wouldn't be perfectionist, that this wouldn't be about the outcome that this was, I promised myself it would be about process. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had to do this. There was this whole moment of introspection. Like, like remember in our work, right? You always say, are you being honest with yourself right now? Yeah. Like we're standing there, right? Like, you know, our second posture, right? Yeah. And we're standing there and it's hurting and you're fighting <laughs> it. And, yeah. and you're like, what? I'm only three minutes in. And, you know, you're there and you're like, and you could bail, like you could go back to Wuji and then it's okay. Of course you can always, you know, and of course you could honestly go back to Wuji, but, yeah. but that whole, am I being honest again? are you honest? It's that chronic nature of a question, right? Like, are you like, is this your honesty? Yes. 
Yes. And of course, that's related to truth and you're, you're being authentic and being in harmony and meeting the room and your interiority and your exteriority. Right. So you're right. There was this whole moment that I just all came and like, what am I with this process right now? Honestly, yeah. Like, what am I with this? Right. And I just looked in. I looked out. I looked in. I, I looked at my feedbacks. I looked at all of the sum of the day, the, the days, and all, and that and that living moment, that present moment, back to that present moment. And then remember when I said about like like the the answer to the call is yes. Yeah. You know, the same thing bubbled up. Time to eat. Yeah. Time to eat. Now it can't be quick. I, I went home and I boiled vegetables and I I drank the broth for the first night. Yeah. Then I blended the vegetables up and I had blended vegetable soup for the next day, you know, and then, you know, I introduced some bone broth, and, you know, again, it took, it was a six day, it was a one fourth of 24 days, six days. So it's like, uh, it was six days to come out of this. So, you know, there was no rushing to the yeah. favorite meal. So right. even then, the, so in some ways, that's where the most discipline is required is actually the right. refeeding time. Like that's like, you have to be very like that. That is actually the strictest discipline. Yes. You know, Right. And the nice thing is, once you go beyond sort of seven days, you kind of can never just quit and like, and, and say, oh, screw it. I'm just going to eat a burger or something, you know, like, like you just, <laughs> you know, vegan or, 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 or meat or otherwise, like you just can't yeah. do that. Right. So, um, so there is a momentum that the longer that you go, that you're like, well, I might as well stay with it. Like, cause I can have a freak out, but I can't do anything quick about it. I'll make myself sick. So there's these love and that's, that's a double-edged sword, right? <laughs> like, as, as you can see, that's right? funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't just be like, I want this, I'm going to eat it. You, yeah. you got a couple of days here, you got to, yeah. Yeah, but then the ego says, well, then you might as do 40, right? Okay. So it's a double edge, right? Like, like, what, like, what, what, you know, so what is, what is that? So listening. And yeah. so this whole process is deeply about listening, the whole system. Remember like that, that shift feeding is about seeking, seeking and doing seeking food making food eating food it's the doing it's an action um metabolism biochemistry evolution yes but fasting listening sitting yeah resting taking stock taking account yeah yeah very very yeah and so you know back to the notion like i know this is a zen based site and, and so many of the people that have come from but you know how is this is a, a lovely augmentation so you could ask the question what is your zen with feeding and what is your zen with fasting because they're two separate ways that we uh, we meet the world mm. and remember the original like in the in the warmer countries um the, the the monks ate a singular meal a day yeah one meal a day is essentially 24 hour fasting your whole life every day yeah and then in the warm, in the, the climates that were colder, they introduced a second meal. And interestingly, they never called it a meal. They called it medicine. Right. So you have a second snack that is medicine. That's fair. We call but, it, but it, yeah. Yakuseki, stone. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, and, but if you think that, that that's in a feeding window of like, you know, of, you know, this time and then so much of the other time, you're not in this. Yeah. A mindless feed yourself. And even, and then even when you're eating, right, and that's the other beautiful thing, it, the, when you fast, it reminds you to be mindful when you eat. I never chew better than when I come out of a fast. I never taste better. I never slow down better. I never savor better right. than in these moments. Right, 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 right. Totally. <laughs> awesome. Love it. No, I think that's really... I think it's really helpful for people to to hear about that um anything else from the um closing um closing take home from all that anything else well you know i'll give it to give me a second but let me ask you this because you were so integral to my being a check-in and an anchor and a a, a feedback like a like a like a well also a cheerleader and a reference point and <laughs> um you know let me let, like for your question, like, let's let us both answer it. Like what, and, and now that we've had this talk, like what, 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 what did you see it in, in our, in that, not in my, you could see, it could be in my process, but, but more importantly, in our interaction through this process, because it became yours, right? You had your five day fast. Um, 
again, I'm probably going to fast again in January, Corey, you know, I, you know, I might be reaching out there, you know, to say, Hey, you know, we, we could make this communal, like we could have a big group of us, you know, like uh, in support. Um, but what did, what did, what, what well, are your, what did you see? What are your last words for, for in our conversation today? Well, for me, for me, I'm always interested in um, just challenging what we think is true or what we think we're supposed to do. Like, um, you know, we're supposed to eat, we're supposed to eat at this time, you know, we're supposed to do these things. And that's, that's so autopilot. And, and instead, um, you know, I think it's just really interesting to, to challenge um, that and to find out, you know, for ourselves, what's, what's really going on. And, uh, and I, I think that's just really, really valuable. And I think it translates to so much. How am I feeling right now? And how can I interact with that? Um, can be the same process of, oh, my assumption is I should be feeling this way or I should be doing this. And um, maybe I can, we, I, we say in Japanese is kufu, maybe my, I can have a, a creative, um, spontaneous way of interacting with what I'm doing. It just as I'm maybe changing the rules on how I'm supposed to be eating. I like that kind of, it, that's kind of what interests me, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that the fasting, yeah, for me, I think, um, yeah, I think it was just really interesting um, having this, this, this time of, of, of lightness and, and sweetness. My wife said, oh, you feel really sweet. There's something really sweet about you. Yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, like there's something very sweet about it. Like um, you just hover a little bit. You hover off the ground a little bit and you're, you're, you're feeling things and you're, um, yeah, there's not so much input, you know, so you're just able to, um, again, process the, you know, what they say, like the, you don't have as many windows open, you know what I mean? You got, you got yeah. one window open, you know, you're just working with that one window, you know, and it. uh, it's really valuable, I think. Um, yeah, so, so no, I feel I had my St. Francis moments, you know, laying there, kind of laying there in bed, kind of hovering off the off the, the, the bed a little bit and, and feeling, um, you know, feeling this kind of uh, source energy in a, in, a, in a clean way. I thought that was really interesting and fun for me. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, as you're talking, I really want to say, emphasize one point to everybody. Like, you know, I did 24 days. It isn't more than four or five, like, or one, like, but, you know, you had five days, like five days is an amazing, beautiful, full experience. It's full on all those levels, evolutionary, biologically, um, developmentally, sociologically, psychologically, spiritually, you know, like it, 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 it is enough. Like it is all, whatever you do in this regard of being full in your humanity, in your becoming is always enough. So this is, we always get confused with quantity. Mm. I did 24 days because I had to, it was what was asked of me in the listening. Right. And that doesn't make me special. That just makes me, it says I was thick headed for 51 years and didn't listen. And that just makes me a remedial student <laughs> that had to do like, you know, I had to do grade 12 over again or something like 12 grade 12 over like five times, you know, yeah. like to, to get, you know, or whatever. Right. Like, like I just um, like that, that's not, there's nothing to glorify there. Like that, and, and there's nothing to also denigrate. I'm, I'm joking too. It's just simply what was asked in, in, in the listening. That's so important. Do what is asked in the context of your living. Right. Um, say yes. Um, you know, and even if any action, even if it's off target, will help you in the next action be closer to target. Mm -hmm. Fail many times in this process, like over and over. I guess what I want to finish with is, you know, what was so was the most important to me was really came out really profoundly after I'd say around day seven, sort of like six, seven in there where both gratitude and grief would bubble up. So naturally, I'd see a friend, I'd see my child, I'd see a patient and both in a shared grieving or often just in gratitude. I was just in tears coming to tears throughout most like and just in, in many, many moments throughout any given day. And in that, like you said, like about Teresa seeing that in you and your St. Francis moments and, but feeling this lightness and heaviness of being the grief was equally welcome. 
you know, like the stirrings of grief and the lightness of gratitude, all reflections of love, you know, love, uh, gratitude, as I see it is our love in that which is present. And our grief is our love in that which is in our loss, which is gone, but it's all love. Mm. And, and I recognized that that wasn't of my doing that gratitude emerged spontaneously, the grief came. And that was that process of that of, of the movement of love is what I would call grace. Yeah, because it was it was love in motion, expressed through my grief and gratitude, expressed through my physicality, my emotionality, my spirituality, my relationality. Love it. Fasting is about making right relationship. It's about making all the levels of relationship beautiful again, correct relationship, beautiful relationship, not right, wrong, not moral relationship, not righteous, not justice relationship, beautiful, bringing it into harmony, resonance, coherence, you know, this, this, the, 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 the weaving of the complexity of this beautiful tapestry and fasting is a way and then, then when the abundances of the rebuild, you can, you, can, you can appreciate the abundance of the, you know, what comes. This is to me what fasting is about. It's, it's about the, the, a moment of pause such that the winds of grace can come through. It, it is, I say, get rid of the word fast, switch in the word pause. This is, nature is in the middle. We're in, you know, well, we're not. We had 13 degrees Celsius today for December. Unusual, but you've seen the snow. I've shown you like, hey, it's snowing here. Um, this is a chance. Winter is a chance for where everything just pauses, mm -hmm. you know, for the abundance of what's going to spring forth in spring. Mm -hmm. So this, Corey, to me is the most important thing. And this is why no matter what our traditions, like I said, my, my, my predilection and calling has been to the shamanic years was to the contemplative and meditative of Zen. Of course, we share crossover interests. These things all, of course, intermingle, you know, our physicalities, our jobs, our families, our, all the things, you know, the fasting is one of these foundational things that just makes all of that relationship come into right relationship. And I think that's what I want to close with today to say that's that's the reason we do it is it hard at times sure but life is hard at times you know but we try to find a way of but it is fasting is about finding your ease in that which is easy and that which is a struggle fasting is a sine wave it gets amplified the hard can be hard the wonderful can be wonderful but we find our way to surf that those swells and troughs and you know with with a kind of ease and um that's the practice part of it. And so, yeah, that, that's what I would say. That's how I'd answer your question. Come around and finish up. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. That's really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, I, again, I think this will really be helpful for, for listeners and, and people watching. Uh, uh, very informative. Um, illuminating um thanks so much for joining us today bill and i my buddy um and uh please you know like this or whatever and share it um and and we'll see you again soon thanks so much bill thank you Corey. okay okay see you soon okay 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 bye <laughs>